Hello. Today, we're going to talk about assembling with copper foil, or as I like to call it, so sue me. Why am I calling it that? You'll find out. This is a 100% homemade production. Today, you will watch me assemble this piece which was not assembled before I made this video. These are six squares made up of two pieces of glass each. You can see them separated in this image. You put them together and they make something along these lines. And that's what I'm gonna to put together. So why did I call it so sue me? Copper foil is uh, it's a subject of some disdain by what I'd like to call lead snobs. People who believe that the only way to assemble a stained glass window is with lead. Copper foil was, uh, I believe, invented by Tiffany, or at least he's credited with inventing it. And it lends itself to very fine detailed work or very organic curves, things of that nature. Um, I thought this uh, image from the Morse Museum is uh, really funny because it is credited as leaded glass. Someone tell the Morse Museum it's copper foil. Yeah. And of course, these would not be possible in lead or they would be extremely difficult. Now, I'm not really a big fan of Tiffany. Maybe don't tell the Morse Museum that when you call them. Um, but I will say he did this window and I wish he'd done more of it. Um, you can see things that uh, seem very copper foily to me are the lines like, like these organic cloud forms. Copper foil is also excellent when you're working in layers of stained glass. John Lafarge, who was uh, Tiffany's biggest competitor or maybe Tiffany was Lafarge's competitor. I don't know. Um, also worked in copper foil and made extremely delicate, detailed pieces that contained 10,000 little tiny bits of glass in them. Another example. So what do you need to make a copper foil panel? You need copper foil. What is copper foil? It's a thin copper tape with a sticky back that you can apply to the edges of your glass. It comes in different shapes so that you can have a wavy edge and some of it has a black back, which is useful if you're using clear because you can sometimes see the edges in your finished project. This is a nice dispenser. You can see it's mine. You can see the copper foil comes in many different widths, which is handy when you're working in layers. If you don't have this nice little dispenser, you will need to make little copper brackets because when you take the foil out of the package, the first thing it wants to do is unwind and turn into a complete unusable rat's nest. So this little bracket is also on the other side and this keeps it from unwinding and doing that. You will thank me later. You will also need a scissors to cut the copper foil and a exacto knife. When assembling with copper foil, you will need some other things. For example, solder. You will not be using any other type of solder such as 50-50 or rosin core solder. And you will need flux. Flux is the magical chemical that makes your solder flow and attach to the copper. My favorite flux is Coppermate flux. It can be a little hard to get. I'm not sure they're making it anymore, but there are many, many other types of flux. Um, Soleic flux you can get from rainbow art glass in gallon bottles. You can't get it from anything in stained glass, which makes me think they should change their name to darn near everything in stained glass. Anyway, soleic flux is actually made out of milk and it's non-toxic, although your cats will try to lap it up and maybe that isn't good. So um, it makes horrible smoke too, presumably non-toxic, but yucky. You need something to apply the flux with. These 10 cent little brushes do a great job. 
And if you are going to assemble the Judith Schechter way, you need some Scotch double stick tape. You also need a soldering iron. Now, this is my soldering iron. Actually, this is my soldering iron, but it is that soldering iron. And as you can see, it's about $300, pretty expensive, but it is a absolute um, war horse of a tool, a 250 watt flamethrower. Now, I think a lot of times people think that to get really delicate lines in um, a copper foil panel, you should use a really tiny soldering iron. That is incorrect. What makes your lines tiny, if that's your thing, is the copper itself. The tip of the hexacon iron is about three quarters of an inch wide. It's a hefty chunk of metal. And its purpose is to be super hot. When you are soldering and co a copper foil piece, what you want is a ton of heat. This Weller 80 watt soldering iron is used a lot for stained glass, but it doesn't really hold the heat very well and it's not great for copper foil. You can get away with it, but you'll kind of be fighting it the whole time. It also helps to have some pieces of wood nailed into a work table at a perfect right angle to assemble on, or at least to assemble the frame on. So to copper foil, get some copper foil, maybe chop a chunk off and uh, start pulling the carrier strip off the back of the sticky side. And then apply it to the glass. The main thing you'll see me doing in this demonstration is making really sure that it is exactly on both sides. So evenly put so that the spine of the glass is right in the middle of the copper foil strip. You don't want more on the front or more on the back if you can possibly avoid it. And then I just go around and put the copper on all four sides. Now I will tell you, it really helps if you have ground the glass evenly and nicely. The copper wants to stick to that rough ground surface. And now I'm gonna clip the copper foil off and I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and make sure that it's really on there, pushing it down just a little bit. You can get like paper cuts from copper foil. You really don't want those, those are nasty. And then I'm gonna pinch it down on all four sides. And then I'm going to smooth it very, very carefully and flat to the surface. The smoother your copper foil is, the easier it will be to solder. You wanna make sure it's really on there and really down. Now, I don't know how well you can see in this video, but you don't need much copper on either side. You just need a little bit. I would say that's about 1 32nd of an inch to 1 16th of an inch. If you have it over, you might want to cut it down with the X-Acto knife because that's not structurally helping you in the soldering process. It's really just creating a lot of heat on the surface of glass, which you actually don't want. If you want fat lines in your composition, that's fine, but make the fat lines by having gaps in your piece rather than putting copper foil all over the surface of the glass. Now I'm going to fast forward the videotape because it's 20 minutes before I finish the whole thing and you will literally die of boredom because it's the same thing. But again, what you're seeing is I'm very careful to make sure that the copper foil is even on the front and the back. And then I am crimping it down and smoothing it with the X-Acto knife.
to copper foil two layers of glass at the same time, you just select a fatter type of copper foil and hold the pieces of glass together and follow the same procedures. People have asked me why I don't laminate them or uh, glue them together, because that would actually create a lot more problems than doing it this way, which is restorable and um, perfectly structurally sound and reasonable. So here I am smoothing it down. Sometimes when the copper foil, if it's too big, I have to uh, notch the corners just a little bit. Remember, you don't want too much copper going onto the surface of the glass, so you can trim it down with your craft knife. And that's a good idea because the heat from the soldering iron can stress the glass. So you just want about a sixteenth of an inch going over the edge of your glass. Once your pieces are all copper foiled and ready to go, bring out your pattern and then you'll see what I'm doing here is I'm putting little pieces of double stick tape in every empty field because I'm going to tape down the glass. Yeah, I know that's not what Tiffany did, but it's what I do and you know what? It works. It keeps the glass from moving around, especially in a smaller panel. Um, it's just really easy peasy peasy way to do it. So that's what I do. Then I carefully place each piece of glass where it belongs on the pattern. Now if you did your pattern carefully, each piece will fit inside the square, leaving a little bit of allowance for the solder to go through. You don't really want them butted right up next to each other. There might be a little arranging and rearranging, as you can see me doing here, to make them fit comfortably. One of the main objectives of this stage of uh, arrangement is that you want your outside perimeter to be square and flush with itself. It's okay to have gaps in the interior, but you really want the outside perimeter to be square and flush. And here's the piece all taped down to the pattern. Just to reiterate, the gaps that you see are not an issue structurally. They might be an issue for you design-wise, but they are not a structural problem. The main thing is to try to have the corners to be uh, 90 degree angles and the edges straight. A little bit of gaps in the middle is not a problem. So, for instance, this isn't a, a terrible, horrible thing. And this is a good example of what determines the thickness of your solder line. It will be this thick here and this thick there. So if that matters to you, then pay close attention. But I will say the obsession with making the world's skinniest solder lines strikes me as a bizarre obsession. I like thick, chunky solder lines with a lot of character. So also, when the solder drips through to the other side, as it will here, you will have a lot of strength in your panel because it also it will use up a lot of solder. So that is a consideration as well. So here it is, the moment you've all been waiting for, soldering itself. The first thing you want to do is to put flux all over every copper surface you can find. Plenty of flux. Remember, flux is Latin for flow, and your solder is not going to flow without flux. So you flux the whole thing.
And now I'm putting on some neoprene gloves. It's not just for safety. It makes it a whole lot easier to clean your hands when you're done, if you do that. So after I have the gloves on, I'm going to get um, my spool of solder and unwind it so that I have a whole bunch of solder available. I've heated up my soldering iron and now I am ready to go. Now the thing I want you to notice is that I am putting the um, string of solder underneath the soldering iron's tip and I'm trying to make as much contact as possible with the solder itself. I'm not holding it above and dripping it down or anything strange like that. I'm putting the solder right on the seam and putting the soldering iron on top of it. The thickness of the soldering iron has nothing to do with whether your lines are thick or not and everything to do with how much heat it has. Also, right now what I'm doing is I'm tacking everything in place by just doing the joints. I'll go back in and add more solder and smooth it out later. So right now I'm just tack soldering the joints. Having tack soldered all the joints, I'm going to go in and start melting more solder onto the seams and smoothing it out. I'm very conscious that I want a full rounded line that looks kind of like um, a lead line. You want to make sure that the solder is um, melting down into the gaps and that it has a nice rounded top. Yes, it will flow all over the place. That's not great. I'm just leading it away from the glass so that it doesn't cause any problems. You shouldn't keep the soldering iron on the glass because it will crack the glass. Just on those edges and go nice and um, slow and fast at the same time. How do you do slow and fast at the same time? Well, that's one of the mysteries of the ages, but you will, as you learn, you will develop a comfort with the speed at which this works optimally. Don't go right up to the edge. You need to have a little bit of a gap there so that your frame fits on. So on all the border pieces, you leave about a quarter of an inch with no solder on it so that the frame will have something to fit on. And all those little blobs of solder on your glass, you can just melt them and push them over, or you can clean them off later. It's not really a big problem at all. It comes right off the glass. The solder will only stick to where there is copper and flux. It won't stick to the copper without the flux. Um, I will also mention, you can't see this, but I am wearing a respirator with a vapor cartridge, so I am not breathing that smoke. It goes without saying that you need to do this in a room with proper ventilation. So I'm going to time lapse the video because the whole thing took about an hour to do and there were technical difficulties in that my laptop ran out of storage to save the live taping of the soldering process. Anyway, I did get it all on, but you don't need to watch everything um, in real time because it took about an hour or so to do. So henceforth, it will be fast. But I will stop every now and then and talk about what I'm doing. Having soldered the whole front side, I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe all that greasy flux off of it. And then I'm going to turn it over and remove the pattern, which is then garbage. I'm going to put it in the trash. I just want to point out that the copper foil is pulling up on, on the upper left side. Um, 
that's not that's typical it's there's not a it's not a sign that something's wrong there there isn't a lot of solder on top of the glass what's really holding it together is what's in between so i just keep pushing it back over and here i'm turning it over and removing the pattern and some of the paper uh, especially on the seams has burnt onto the um, solder that's there and I'll need to clean that off which I'm going to do with a stiff wire brush. And it's pretty important that also you remove any of that double stick tape that remains because uh, that could uh, dematerialize when you solder the back courtesy of your soldering iron and make a big melting plastic mess, which you do not want. Now before I solder side two, I'm actually going to make the zinc frame and fit the piece in. And I do that with this thing here, which is a zinc saw. So I'm just putting in the pieces of U-channel zinc right underneath the blade and making sure that it's cutting at the right spot. And then I'm gonna chop it. If you don't have a saw like this, I'm sure you'll wanna run out and buy one. But if you can't run out and buy one, you'll have to use a hacksaw. To size the pieces of zinc, make sure that you're leaving an allowance of about a 16th of an inch on both sides so that they fit together in a 90 degree angle, as illustrated in this slide. Then I'm going to use the corner bracket that I've made with the pieces of wood to put the two mitered zinc pieces together and slide the window in it. Now, if there is no solder up to the edges, it should fit okay. And I'm going to put all four bars on and then hammer a few nails to keep everything in place while I solder those corners together. You know, I'm a really terrible measurer. I can measure 10 times and I still won't get it right. So there were little gaps in my pieces and I was struggling to make it um, fit better. And eventually I got it to the point where it fit okay. But what you're gonna see me doing is uh, soldering a mistake in one corner, which happens to me with alarming frequency. But there's always a workaround. Isn't that comforting to know? When I have the pieces in place, I'm going to put flux on the zinc. You will never ever be excused from the task of fluxing your solder joints. And then I am going to solder all those joints on the top. Then I'm gonna flip the piece over and I'm going to solder the whole back. What I'm doing here is I'm gonna put a little copper foil band-aid on the corner where the mitered zinc didn't quite reach. That's the workaround I'm talking about, and I'm sorry I didn't catch it center of the camera, but you'll see in a second. It's just a little copper foil band-aid that sticks right on top of the glass where there's a gap. There it is. See how I did that? No one will ever notice a thing. And then it's time to solder. Time-lapse videos are going to teach people that they don't need to be slow and patient. Go slow, be patient, you'll get much better results. And now I'm going to solder the other side. But what's going on here, you say? You know what that is? That is a cold, wet towel. When your piece has gaps in it, you are going to want to do the other side on a cold, wet towel. Why? Because that will trap and chill any solder that might be wanting to go through and create a uh, um, sort of nightmarish experience where rivers of solder are going back and forth from front to back. As you can see, I'm having a lot of difficulty arranging my wet towel. But there you go nice and flat, and then I'm going to flux everything and I'm going to solder 
in uh, um, 20 times faster than it takes. But I just want to point out, you can see that some of blobs have flow, flowed through uh, when I did the front, and I'm just going to move those blobs with the hot soldering iron to a place where they are more needed and wanted, and distribute the solder evenly, making those beautiful, fuliginous, rounded copper foil lines that are so sensuous and beautiful. A really nice solder line has a very smooth, even look to it and a rounded top. This is the finished panel with transmitted light coming through the back. And this is what the panel looks like in reflected light. Now, I did this pretty quick and I didn't do my best job. So I'm going to use that as a teaching opportunity to explain to you some of the things that are less than optimal. Like some of the lines will look pretty good. Like this is a nice line, this is a nice line, but mm, maybe over here it gets a little uh, sloppy. So that's a nice line there. This is just too much. There doesn't need to be that much. This soldering line is very rough and that's what the heat is for. I could have gone over this and smoothed it out, but I didn't catch it at the time because I was going too fast and not being patient. You of course will not do that. And this, I don't even know what happened here. I obviously didn't even bother to make the solder meet the frame, which would have been nice because that is the idea. Anyway, that is the basics of soldering a panel. Now a public service announcement. Stained glass and lead. First and foremost, I wish to reassure you that working with lead can be totally safe. Please inform yourself. For example, the Mayo Clinic has some helpful and reliable information, which I am showing you now. Lead poisoning occurs from ingesting lead, which apparently tastes great, or by breathing lead dust. So please don't do either of those things. Lead poisoning is cumulative, meaning that acute cases, especially in adults, are extremely rare. And to get an acute case of lead poisoning, you'd have to eat a whole ton of it all at once. So you have plenty of time to protect yourself from getting lead poisoning. Remember, the ancient Romans stored their wine in lead vessels. But also remember that that may have been a contributing factor to the fall of Rome. I know a lot of stained glass artists and I only know one person who ever got lead poisoning and they're fine, by the way, there is treatment. This happened because of breathing dust in the process of removing old windows from a church in order to restore them. A process that can lead to a lot of putty dust being released into the air and the putty dust had lead in it. Wearing a proper respirator, gloves and changing your dusty clothing is essential if you are somehow exposed to lead dust. But soldering stained glass and handling stained glass does not create or involve lead dust in any way. Soldering creates vapor, which may have some lead in it. Lead vapor and lead dust are not the same thing, and there is no agreement that I can tell on whether or not the vapor is toxic. You may wish to err on the side of caution and wear a medically fitted respirator with the appropriate vapor cartridges. I myself ask for a heavy metal tox screen every time I have a checkup. In 30 years, you know what? My level is below average. Um, note from the Mayo website here, the certain hobbies section. Remember in stained glass, the main issue would be ingestion. This can't happen if you wash your hands after touching lead. So wash your hands and don't eat the lead. Um, these prevention tips, are for people who may have casual contact. As a stained glass artisan, you should practice extra care. 
One final note, your solder seams will eventually patina and the lead will not rub off on your hands so much, but wash them anyway, okay? Thank you. This has been a public service announcement. Don't eat the lead. Don't eat the lead. Don't eat the lead.